Welcome to MageCasts.io. My name is Fabrizio Branca and in this episode I want to show you how to install PHP Storm inside your virtual machine, inside your dev box and rethink your dev box, rethink editing your files, maybe rethink your development workflow uh, for you personally or within your team. So, a typical setup um, might look something like this. You have your host machine, this could be like a Mac or Windows or Linux and then you run a virtual machine inside um, on, on your host uh, which um, very often is probably um, Vagrant and um, on your Vagrant box there is um, a, a LAMP server set up and um, all your project files live there and you most likely want to access those files from PHP Storm that's installed on your host system. So what I do is um, I um, run Samba and expose the my project files that live in the Vagrant box to my host system and I work on the Samba share. This works really well for me. I did a video for that. If you're interested, you should check that out. But um, I hear that this doesn't work really well on Macs and also other people have problems with this being terribly slow for them. So um, another um, setup is um, using PHP Storm's um, SSH remote um, server sync uh, feature to have PHP Storm um, transparently manage um, the files and actually maintain a local copy on your host system. Um, so while you added your local, you added your local copy, and uh, PHP Storm will sync that back to the server. Um, this works well, and I guess this is probably the most widespread um, setup. But uh, what I don't like here is that um, you basically work on, on, on a separate set of files and especially now with Magento 2 where Magento 2 is creating a lot of files automatically in the background. Um, then uh, you uh, PHP Storm doesn't know about uh, those files unless you manually update them and um, so you don't have them for code completion, for um, uh, debugging with xdebug and um, also if you um, if you do uh, your git operations on the box and you do a git pull and then you forget to manually sync them back um, there is like a source of problems of um, uh, you overwriting files that have been changed before. So. Um, another setup uh, is um, actually have your files live on the host system and use VirtualBox's shared folders to uh, make them available inside the box. Uh, I don't like this setup um, since I believe that the project files belong to the project and uh, and they should go in the dev box. The dev box should be self-contained. In a setup like this one, you basically only use your your Vagrant box as a PHP runtime and and uh, your file will live on, on the host and um, yeah in addition to that depending on what host you run uh, you can't uh, run the bash scripts or you don't have access to symlinks you can't use mothman um, so that's why I uh, I believe the project files should always live inside the box so what if a setup like this was possible so you run PHP storm in the box PHP storm actually access those files locally and you access um, PHP storm from your host system through some sort of um, other um, protocol and there's different ways of doing that already uh, like with um, with the virtual box you can um, actually not only have a um, um, a server you want to install, for example, but have like a, a, a full desktop, um, or use something like VNC or other tools. But the the, um, the tool that I want to show you in this in this video is called X2Go, which is actually close to um, or it has some uh, technology um, in common with VNC, and um, it's it's basically using X11 forwarding. Um, it's based on no machine, but it's a fully open source, and it's optimized for low bandwidth, so it's super fast and snappy, and uh, that's what's uh, what's a game changer in my opinion um, I can totally see a setup like this actually work and uh, being used so uh, before we dig into um, how this actually works let's explore some of the possibilities that we have um, in with, with, set with a setup like this one so if um, if PHP system actually is part of your virtual machine there is no real reason to have um, the machine sit on your host, especially if that's fast and snappy. Um, so your your Vagrant box could totally be a remote, remotely managed um, uh, EC2 instance, and uh, that that is uh, being provisioned by another um, uh, person or team or another tool that you um, simply um, have access to. And this is where we uh, we start thinking in a in a DevBox as a service um, scenario. 
and um, but of course I mean everything here um, um, still continues to be to be valid and true and working if um, if we still look at the dev box as a vagrant image so we could still um, provision and prepare this vagrant box for your team including PHP storm and all the tools and, and the settings and um, code sniff and everything um, inside the box and then deliver a re uh, already pre-provisioned uh, vagrant box to your team members so um with but with this box actually sitting on EC2 you could uh, totally have um um multiple computers or actually multiple different devices to uh, and uh, accessing this um so basically your computer and your PHP storm uh, becomes a, a thin client you you actually access PHP storm running on your EC2 instance and if you pick it up from a different computer um you you uh, pick it up exactly where you left it off in, with the previous device but in a scenario like this with X2Go, it's actually possible that multiple users share one session. So it's possible that Alice and Bob in a pair programming scenario work with the same PHP Storm instance, looking at the same screen, interacting with the same devices, and um, yeah, while being on the phone, um, they can work on the same um, code and discuss things remotely. And all this is driven by a remotely installed uh, PHP Storm on your remote dev box. But then, of course, um, you could also um, think about a scenario where um, these EC2 instances are not managed individually by the developers. Um, um, ideally, um, you should be able to spin up a dev box within minutes, but the reality is that it always takes forever until every team member has um, the, the dev box uh, provision. There's always problems with Chef, Puppet, or whatever, and so it would be nice to, um, to have um, this this process be managed um, outside of the um, individual developers laptops and just give them access to that either um, like I mentioned um, uh, giving them access to a remotely hosted um, EC2 instance or actually um, pre-provisioning uh, a, a base box and then um, and then delivering the, the base box to them with everything inside including PHP Storm So, uh, but in in a in a continuous integration um, environment, you could actually um, uh, bring the the concept of immutable infrastructure one one step further to actually have Jenkins, for example, create a dev box for every build or have that uh, have that created nightly. So uh, in the morning when you come to your office, you basically connect to your dev box and it has the new build already installed. Everything um, is is there in place, and um, yeah, so it's it's basically. Um, recreating everything based on um, on a nightly build for example or if you work on different projects and the projects have different setups like for example one project um, uses nginx instead of apache another one um, has um, varnish um, as, as part of the infrastructure so you could have multiple individual project um, setups inside um, a dev box and also have them managed remotely and uh, provisioned for you so you just um, access them so, how does this actually work? Um, in order to run um, PHP Storm on your dev box, you need like an uh, an X server, and uh, you need something that um, brings this this uh, the interaction with that to the outside. So the tool, as I mentioned before, is called X2Go, and um, X2Go um, is it, it's super simple to install. You'll see that in a minute. It comes with a server and a client, um, and uh, the server. Um, uh, brings uh, installs all dependencies automatically so basically you just install the x2go server and everything starts working and on the client side there um, there is an x2go client for Mac Windows and Linux um, you just download it, install it and then you connect to the server and you're ready to go okay so let's look how this works I created a simple um, setup um, provisioning script uh, it's very quick and dirty so there's a lot of room for improvement and making this um, nicer ideally this would go in uh, in a CloudFormation template and you provision that and um, you have like a, a wait condition so you know when everything is done uh, but uh, for now let's just um, use this and paste it in the user data section of an EC2 instance and uh, wait for a couple of minutes to um, until everything is there so what we're doing here is basically we're installing X2Go um, in this case I'm not even installing a window manager um, you could uh, but if you're only planning to uh, on accessing individual applications like PHP Storm or Firefox, you don't even need a window manager. If you want one, um, LXDE is probably a nice one because it's really lightweight. Um, but you can you can use whatever you want here. Then here um, I'm just downloading um, uh, PHP Storm and extracting it, 
and the same thing with Firefox. So um, in this example, I also want to show uh, how to access your project with Firefox also installed in the dev box. But of course, you could totally also just expose um, port 80 um, and access that uh, through your local um, um, uh, browser. Uh, but uh, in, in like a um, team setup environment, it, it, it could be interesting to have also Firefox uh, prepared with, um, with all the extensions that you need and also uh, make the um, make uh, the, the debugging workflow easier if everything actually sits on the same box. So here we're just installing a simple LAMP stack, nothing special here, and then um, some file permission stuff. So I'll just copy this. I'll go to um, the AWS console, easy to and I'm going to launch an instance. So I'll just pick the Ubuntu 14.04 instance. A 2T medium works perfectly fine. In the advanced details, we're going to copy the snippet from GitHub and we just review and launch it. So I already created a key pair here. If you don't have one, you need to create one and let's launch it. So you could totally log into that server here as soon as it gets a public IP address and watch the provisioning script work. Um, um, cloud init writes a log file to var log cloud in cloud dash init dash dash output log. Um, but yeah, we'll just wait and see what happens here. So we have this public IP now and now we actually switch to our desktop. So I already installed the X2Go client, the Windows client, um, and I also already loaded the um, the key that I created to my um, page end, and here we just log in. It's Ubuntu box, so the default user is Ubuntu, and we tell it to auto log in via SSH agent, and um, here uh, we don't have any window managers installed, so we tell it to run a single application. And uh, we have PHP, Storm, and Firefox both installed, um, and uh, they should be living in the path. path. So let's um, try Firefox first. So let's connect to it. And now this should launch a Firefox instance on the EC2 instance. So here you can see it's forwarding the X, X11 connection, and here we go. Here is Firefox running on the EC2 instance, and it really feels like a native window, and it also renders actually pretty nice. And here we should run, be able to run a local host, and you can see Apache is installed. Local host, of course, now is the EC2 instance. Okay, so now let's create another session. Same IP address, user Ubuntu try auto login, but this time we run PHP Storm. Again, PHP Storm should be in the path, uh, but it's not installed yet, so it will prompt us for installation. So let's see what happens. Here we go. This is PHP Storm on the box. Let's install it. And here we go, PHP Storm is launching. Okay, so we create a new project here. And let's pick a location. So here you can see this is not my Windows machine, but this is the EC2 instance. var dub 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 HTML. And let's say demo. Great. Okay, so here you can see this is PHP Storm, and we can create a new file, index.php, and you can see it's actually pretty snappy and works really well. Hello world. So this totally feels like um, something that that I could see myself working with. Yeah, so let's see. Um, we can launch Firefox right from here. And um, 
now you see actually this is again Firefox installed on the box um, and we should be able to just run it on port 80 hello world here we go so all this is happening on the um, on the EC2 instance and we just have remote access to it from here I hope you enjoyed the video and um, let me know if you play with X2Go and like it and if you actually make something out of it. Thank you. Bye-bye.